Alright, so we're going to start breaking down the terms frequency and relative frequency. And I'm just going to mention this now, and it'll pop up here in a moment. Frequency, these are always whole numbers. All right, and relative frequencies, those are percentages. Sometimes we refer to them as proportions. You've heard of the term ratios, right, and fractions. So you've got five different vocab terms that basically mean the same thing, so just be on the lookout for that. And we want to be able to go from frequencies to relative frequencies and relative frequencies back to frequencies. All right, so a frequency distribution for a categorical variable, oops, categorical data, is a table that displays possible categories with the associated frequencies or relative frequencies. All right, so the frequency of a particular category is the number of times the category appears in the data set. The relative frequency for a particular category is the fraction or proportion of the time that category appears in the data set. And we calculate relative frequency by taking your frequency, turning it into a fraction where your denominator is the number of observations in the data set. And we're going to work through this. I know this sounds pretty funky, and that's okay. We're going we're gonna to work it on this table below. So when the table includes relative frequencies, it's sometimes referred to as a relative frequency distribution. We're also going to talk about cumulative frequency and cumulative relative frequency. So I'm going to mention these now, but I'm going to circle back to them once we've done the frequency and relative frequency columns in example six. So cumulative frequency is the, is the accumulation of the previous frequencies. Cumulative relative frequency is the accumulation of previous relative frequencies. And I want, I want to stress this word previous once we get there. Okay, so we got a whole bunch of vocab coming at us. Frequency, it's a whole number. All right, we're going to count. Okay, we'll count how many times a certain data value appears. If we want to turn it into a percentage, we'll divide it by the number of observations in the data set. And this works on categorical data. And you'll see that, again, there's that gray area that I talked about a little bit with the, the previous example. Um, so frequencies and relative frequencies technically get applied to categorical data, but I also want to talk about the gray area. So whenever you have discrete numerical data, you can do it as well. And I mention this because there's a lot of things out there, a lot of variables out there that are um, continuous numerical, but we report them discreetly. And once they're reported discreetly, we a lot of times, there's plenty of times that we'll turn them into a frequency distribution. And when you see distribution, okay, it's a fancy word for table. All right, so distribution and table go together. And once you have a frequency, divide it by your sample size, get a relative frequency. All right, so let's take a look at what's going on here. I'm gonna scoot this page up to show example six. Okay, so as we start to take a look at this, it says 20 students were asked how many hours they worked per day. Their responses in hours are listed below. So one thing I want us to think about here, all right, I have 20 students, all right, so my sample size is 20. So I'm gonna put this here, sample size is 20. Frequently, we'll say that that is our n, okay? So, oops, can you see this? Let me scoot that down just a little bit. I think you can see it now. So a lot of times, we'll just say the phrase n equals 20. You'll get used to that letter n. We use it all the time when we're dealing with sample size and we're, we're dealing with it now. So in terms of what is the variable, because I want to get us into this habit, every time you read a question, what is the variable? So think about what are you asking each of these 20 students? All right, so 20 students were asked how many hours they worked per day. So let me just write this here. My variable is number of hours worked per day, okay? So if we're talking about number of hours worked per day, let's use the stuff we talked about previously. That is a numerical variable. Now, do I count the number of hours I work per day or do I measure the number of hours I work per day? Technically, you measure time. So I want to say this is a continuous 
numerical variable, okay? But it's reported discreetly. And think about this, when you log in or do your time cards or however it, it works at your job now, you don't say, hey, I worked 8.2758 hours. Say I worked eight and a half hours, or you start rounding, 8.25 hours. And for these students, it looked like they just rounded to the nearest whole hour. That's fine. But as long as it's reported discreetly, I can make a frequency table, okay? So if we look at this, one of these students worked five hours a day, six hours, one's down here at two, right? It looks like somebody actually worked seven. And if I look at my data values, it looks like the smallest number I see is two, and the highest number I see is seven, which is why I put that column there. So in this first column, and this is a frequency distribution, right? This is this giant frequency table. For my data value, I put my literal data values. These are the values of my variable. And in terms of frequencies, I need to take each of these data values and find out how many times they were mentioned in my data set. Okay, so let's look at the data value of two and compare that to my data set. So if I go through here and I start to count, right, I see I have one student that worked two hours a day, two students that worked two hours a day, three students that worked two hours a day. So I'm gonna put three here, okay? So there were three students who had this data value, okay? Now let me go through and count how many students worked three hours a day. See one, two, three, four, I think five. So five students were working three hours a day. Let's go do it for four. See one, two, three. And then for five, we have one, two, three, four, five. For six, I have one, two. And for seven, we have just that one student working seven hours a day. And just for fun, I want you to take the total of this column. So let me go to my calculator and add this up. All right, so if we're taking a look, I have three plus five plus three. If I total that out, ooh, I get to 19, which is a problem. So if I'm looking at this, I've got 19 here. I must have missed something. And I mentioned that because it said I had 20 students, so this frequency column should always add up to your sample size. So let me go find my error. So in terms of frequency for the twos, we had one, two, three. I'm in agreement with that. Threes, one, two, three, four, five. In agreement with that for fours, one, two, three. For fives, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's my error. So this should have been six which is fine. You're gonna make errors as you go through this. Let me try this again, make sure it adds up to 20. Okay, there we go, we're adding up to 20. Okay, so I'll put that this is a little check mark there, okay? All right, so with that, I'm gonna go a little out of order. I'm gonna skip over the cumulatives just for right now because I wanna talk about relative frequencies. So in terms of relative frequencies, these are percentages. All right, and we have a formula. If we just scooch this down a bit, our formula says if you want a relative frequency, take your frequency and divide by the number of observations in your data set. So in this particular problem, all of my denominators are going to be 20 because that's how many observations I had in my data set. Now, this numerator will change through my data values. All right, so each time my frequency changes, so will my numerator change. So let me move this back up and let's start to take a look here. So as I go to do this one for the relative frequency count for the students who worked two hours a day, I'm gonna do three divided by 20. I will figure out what that fraction is equal to. Oops. It looks like it's about 15%. For the data value of three, I had five students out of my 20 working three hours a day. So I'm gonna take five students out of my 20 and see what that percentage is. And that is about 25%. And then I'm gonna repeat this process. 
So let's see how we're doing with this. We've got three students who worked four hours a day. There were six students working five hours a day. Two, and then that one student here. All right, let's see what all of these fractions turn out to be. I already knew three divided by 20 was 15%. Um, 6 out of 20, 30%. 2 out of 20, it's 10%. And this one's going to be 5%. Okay. So one thing I do want us to do, I want us to total these relative frequency columns out. All right. In the same way that we totaled the frequency columns out and got to the sample size, something special should happen when you total out your relative frequency column. So let's take a look. All right, we've got 0 0.15, 0 0.25. When I total that out, I should get one. Because one as a percentage is 100%. And I should have accounted for every student in my sample. So you wanna make sure that your frequency column always totals out to your sample size and your relative frequency column always totals out to 100%. Okay, so with that, we got how we can convert from frequency to relative frequency. And I just I want to interpret a couple of these just so we can, we can talk about it. So let's talk about 3 and 5. All right, this is saying, if I'm going to write this on the margins here, 5 students worked 3 hours a day. I want to now look at that in terms of the relative frequency. I could have also said 25% of students worked three hours a day. Okay, there's another sentence I could have put together. All right, so with that, let's take a look at cumulative frequency and cumulative relative frequency. So let me scooch this back down. All right, cumulative frequency, it's the accumulation of previous frequencies. So I'm gonna show you how to crunch this. I'm gonna use something called the zigzag method. This is not anything formal, it's just some name I have that helps me remember how to do this. And cumulative relative frequency is the accumulation of previous relative frequencies. And there's not an exact transfer here. But I think the, the time in your life that you're most um, familiar with the cumulative term is a cumulative GPA. Right? Your cumulative GPA is not just your GPA from this semester, but it's this semester and all previous semesters. So in terms of cumulative frequencies, we're going to work from some frequency on down, all right, numerically on down. Um, cumulative frequencies are whole numbers. Cumulative relative frequencies are percentages, proportions, ratios, fractions. Anytime you see that word relative, you're talking about a percentage. All right, so let's take a look at this zigzag method. And here's what I mean by zigzag. And if you watch Game of Thrones, you know Rickon should have zigzagged. All right, so if I want to build from frequency to cumulative frequency, okay, here's the zigzag. Take whatever frequency from your first data value, take whatever that frequency is and just move it over. Okay, and here's going to come the zigzag. Okay, so I zigged. Now we're going to zag. So I'm going to take 3 to 5. 3 plus 5, I'm going to accumulate. 3 plus 5 is 8. Okay? So I zigged over here and I zagged. Okay? Zig, zag. And I'm going to do it again. All right? So I'm going to take 8 and I'm going to zag here. Okay? So I'm going to do 8 plus 3 is 11. All right? When I get that 8, that 11, I'm going to write it there. I'm going to do 11 plus 6, right, which is 17. 17 plus 2, which is 19. 19 plus 1, which is 20. And if I've done my job correctly, that last cell should have your sample size in it. So I'm going to rework this just so you can see it again. The zigzag is always a little funky the first time out, so let me erase all of my information. And we're going to run it again. All right, so here we go. We're gonna zigzag. So I'm gonna move, I'm gonna zig, three. Here comes the zag, right? Three plus five 
8. 8 plus 3, 11. And then as soon as you want to stop writing the zigzag, you're fine. 11 plus 6, 17. 17 plus 2, 19. 19 plus 1, 20. Okay? And again, if you do this correctly, you should always wind up with a 20 at the last cell here. You've accumulated all of your students in that problem. All right, I want to interpret the 8. Okay? So we had up here five students work three hours a day, eight students worked three or fewer hours a day. Okay. So in bumping up from interpreting a frequency to a relative frequency, it's this phrase, or fewer. Right? I could say 11 students worked four or fewer hours a day. 17 students worked five or fewer hours a day. 19 students worked six or fewer hours a day. It's always or fewer. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So you can zigzag from relative to cumulative relative. And just to practice this, let's zigzag. All right, so I'm gonna zig, we got 15. 15 plus 25 is 40, right? 40 plus 15 is 55. And I'm gonna stop writing the arrows. 55 plus 30 is 85. 85 plus 10 is 95. And 95 plus five is one. And again, if I do that correctly, it should total out to one. So whatever the two totals you found here, they should always be in the bottom cells, okay? So you can zigzag if you've got relative frequency and want to build a cumulative relative. That'll always work. I want to show you one option or one alternative to doing that. Okay, so you got zigzagging, that works. The other option is if you ever wanna build from cumulative frequency to cumulative relative, divide by the sample size. So here's what I mean, or not divide, yeah, divide by sample size, excuse me. So I could take three and I could divide it by 20, all right, and I could get 15%, okay? Here, I have a cumulative frequency of eight. If I wanna turn that into a cumulative relative frequency, divide it by sample size. And eight divided by 20 is 40%, okay? I could take 11, divide it by 20, and I would take a look. I'm gonna start using my calculator. 11 divided by 20, looks like that is 55%. All right, and then I have 17 out of 20. This would have been 19 out of 20, and this would have been 20 out of 20. This one I know is one. Let's take a look. 17 divided by 20, great, 85. 19 out of 20 is 95. So you could zigzag or you can take cumulatives and divide it by sample size to build to a cumulative, excuse me, relative. So there's a bunch of stuff here, right? So I went from my data values, counted my frequencies. From frequencies, you divide by sample size to get relative frequencies. From frequencies, I zigzag to get cumulative frequencies. To get cumulative relative, you could zigzag from here, or you could divide this one by sample size. So you've got a bunch of options there. But you are gonna wanna figure out all four of these columns. I won't necessarily ask you all four each time, and I won't necessarily start you with um, frequency. Maybe you'll start at relative and have to go to frequency and then to cumulative. So you wanna be able to travel along these four columns. All right, so with that, let's answer these questions. It says, what percentage of the students worked six hours per day. When I see the word percentage, I know that I'm looking at some kind of relative frequency. So I want a relative frequency for students who work six hours a day. Here are the students who work six hours a day. The percentage of students who work six hours a day was 10%. Okay. This said, which percentage of students work between three and five hours a day inclusive? So I wanna include three and five in my answer. So here's three and five, right? Three, four, five. So if I look at it, I had 25%, 15%, and 30%. So let me add those numbers together. So I had 25% of students working three hours a day. 
I want to add to that 15% working four hours a day and then the 30% who worked five hours a day. And when I add those three numbers up, I'm looking at 0 0.70, or I could write that as 70%. And I don't care which option you give me, 10% or 70%, whatever one you prefer. Which percentage of students work six or fewer hours a day? So I see six or fewer, and I see the word percentage. Anytime I see fewer, I'm looking at a cumulative value. I want a cumulative relative frequency, all right, which would be this number right here. So I'm looking at six hours a day, or six or fewer, excuse me, and the cumulative relative frequency is 95%. Now, you didn't have to do it that way. You could have added these numbers up. You could have subtracted that total from one, or that you could have subtracted 5% from one to get the complement, but that idea is something we'll talk about later. Just we need to be able to get to 95%. Oh, I think I put that in the wrong place. percent and again it doesn't matter if you write it as a percent or a decimal I'm just trying to stay consistent what percentage of students were fewer than six that's different fewer than six means five or fewer okay so I still want a percentage but now I want five or fewer so that's going to be 85 percent okay so as we start to finish this out I'm going to go ahead and on the next few pages, I'm going to show you how to make a frequency histogram and a cumulative frequency histogram. And here's the YouTube video. Should you ever want to see how uh, a different teacher does it, but we got a YouTube reference video for you. Hi guys, Ms. Rayo here. So I want to go through example six again, but this time I want us to just take a look at how we could do this on our calculator. We want to make both a frequency histogram and a cumulative frequency histogram. And the first thing we want to do is put our variable into something called list one. So your data has one dimensional arrays called lists in here. And I'll show you where, they, uh, where they're held. So this button right here where it says stat, you're going to use that all of the time in this class. Keep in mind you're in a stats class. So when all else fails and you can't remember which button to push, it was probably stats. So let's go ahead and hit stats. And you can see this menu drop down in here. We can edit, sort, clear, or set up. And we're going to edit right now. So if I want to hit edit, I can either hit the number one key or I can hit enter. Usually I just hit enter. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to put all of the values of our variable. And keep in mind for this problem, we had uh, a numerical variable, the number of hours worked in a day. We're going to just enter those into L1, and you can see the title up here, L1. So let me just do that, and it's it's literally data entry. If you hear about a job called data entry, this is what data entry is. So I'm going to do two, enter, three, enter, four, enter, so on and so forth. Okay, so I get that going on. And then what I want to do next is I want to put the frequencies here. So let me hit my right arrow key. Now you can see I'm in the L2 column. So I'm going to go put those frequencies that we picked up back in example six. So three, enter, five, enter, and give me a moment to get all of these in. Okay. And you can see all the data entry over here in terms of the keys that I'm actually hitting. So I've got all of that. It's looking good. Okay, so I've got my data in. That's always the first thing that you want to do in any of these problems. Um, to create a histogram, we're going to make uh, something called a stat plot in your calculator. You can see the word stat plot written right up here above your y equals key, and it's in blue, so I want to hit the blue button first. So I'm going to hit second and then y equals, and it gets you to this interface. And so your calculator has the ability to make three plots at a time. You can see for right now, all three of mine are off. You see off, off, off. And what I want to do is I want to put one plot on, all right? And then I want to turn that into a histogram. So the first thing I want to do is edit out this plot. Let me go ahead and hit enter and get into that screen. So you can see right now off has the black background and this there's a blinker flashing on on. If I hit enter, I can now turn on on quite literally right and you can see on now has the black background so that that stat plot is on and you can toggle left and right 
with those arrow keys and you can turn things on and off by hitting the enter arrow uh, by the enter key. So I can toggle these on and off if I want. If I went back into second and in y equals, you can see now plot one is on, plot two is still off, and plot three is still off. I still want to edit out plot one, I'm not done with it. I just wanted you to see what we're starting to do here. I'm going to clear out this key history just so we can start over. All right, so we've got this. So you have six types of plots that your calculator will allow you to make. We will eventually learn all of these. Um, Stat Crunch has even more, but your calculator has six. We're going to settle in right here with this histogram. And histogram, it's like a bar chart. You've probably seen them before in your real life. But if I want to go from this first type over to this third type, I hit the down arrow key, and then I hit the right arrow key twice, and I hit enter. And you'll see once I hit enter, that particular type will now have the black background. So I hit enter there, okay? So going through this, I've got my plot one turned on, I've got my type selected, and then we have to take care of these two pieces of information. So let's scroll down here, okay? Oops, excuse me. Our variable is an L1, right? Um, if yours isn't an L1, you would have to put whatever list you placed that information into. But our frequencies are in L2. And right now this is saying frequency of one. Uh, if we had put all 20 data points in, um, rather than the variables and then the frequencies, if all 20 data points were in, just let's say in L1, then I would leave it at one. And I can show you that option in a little bit, but that's not what we did. We put our values of our variable in L1 and we put our frequencies into L2. So if you come and look over the one, two, three, four, five, six button, if you look closely, you'll see L1 in blue, L2, L3, so on and so forth. And now my frequencies are in L2. So I need to change this number one to L2. And right now you'll see the little A flashing. That means your alpha key is on, which, which also means if I were to hit this, this button right now with that alpha key on, you can see it's actually, since the alpha is green, it's gonna punch up the letter Z, which is not what I want. So let me go back here and I need to hit the second key. When I hit the second key, the arrow shows. And now when I hit the number two, L2 will show up. So that's good. All right, I'm gonna scroll this page forward. All right, once you've set up your stat plot, and again, if I go back into second and y equals, you'll see it's ready to go, right? Plot one, it's on. I've got a, ooh, I've got a histogram. This is a good check. I see L1, it didn't save the L2, right? It's got a one here, that's a problem. Let me go enter or edit that again. I'm not sure what happened. I think sometimes I need to hit enter in order for it to save. Let's see if that worked now. All right, now, now we're looking good. So it's just an example of checking things on your calculator. All right, so if you want to view this, if you've used a graphing calculator before, sometimes um, in math classes, or a lot of times in math classes, you'll use that graph button. We're not going to do that. We have a special button in here. So I'm going to hit the zoom key. All right, so let's hit zoom. And there's a whole bunch of actions. You can zoom into a box, zoom in, zoom out, decimal square, blah, blah, blah. I want you to notice this little down arrow key here. Whenever that pops up on your calculator, it means there's more menu options. So let me hit the down arrow key a few more times. I don't know how many registered. Let's go one more, two more. So I want you to look at zoom nine. You can see the word stat in it. Again, anything, any button with the word stat in it, we're gonna be using in, in this class, right? We've used the stat button, we've used the stat plot. Now we're using the stat zoom stat. So you can hit zoom nine, so you can hit the nine button or the enter button. And we're just gonna hit nine to change it up. And we get that, okay? So we've got our frequency histogram. Let's go ahead and just trace this thing out for a moment, okay? If I hit trace and you see this popping up, right? It's saying that I had three students who worked at least two, but not three hours per day. And I did have two, um, sorry, I had three students who were working two hours a day, right? The strict less than means if they worked exactly three hours a day, they're not in this rectangle. They're gonna be over here. I can trace over to the right, right? And you'll see that I had five students who worked three, but not quite four hours a day, somewhere between three and less than four hours a day. And you can trace this the whole way out as many times as you want. 
if I was going to write this on a midterm, I would need to put my variable along the x-axis and frequency along the y-axis. And you can see that right here. Here it is, number of hours worked is along the x-axis in my key and frequency is along the y-axis. And whenever you're making these histograms or any graph in stats, your variables on the x-axis, that will always be the case. And they'll either be frequency or relative frequency here. Um, you could also have written number of hours worked along the y-axis. That would have been acceptable, okay? So let's go try and do this and make a cumulative frequency histogram. And I mentioned cumulative frequency histogram. Let me scooch back up here. Only because that was what was asked of us, okay? And when we're done with all this, I'm going to come back and show you yet another option, okay? So let me scooch this back down, and let's go into our data entry. So you're going to start with data entry, set your stat plots, zoom nine. Here we go. So data entry, stat, and edit. I'm going to opt to put my cumulative frequencies into L3. You don't have to. You could overwrite L2 if you want. I just want to go ahead and put them in L3 to match what I have on my key. So give me a moment to do some data entry. Okay, there we go. Now since we've done the data entry, I'm going to clear all this out because it's again, it's getting a little jumbled. Okay, once I've established that, go into your stat plot. So second and y equals. All right. Now, if I look at my plots, I'm, I'm in pretty good shape. I've got one on, I've got two off, great. I've got a histogram, my variable is in L1, but my frequencies aren't in L2. I mean, technically my frequencies are, oops, excuse me, in L2, but I wanna do cumulatives, so I need to change this to L3. And we saw last time if I didn't hit enter, it didn't seem to save it, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. Once I do that, we're gonna get, we're gonna hit zoom nine. Okay, and then we're going to see a little bit of a problem, and we're going to talk about it. So I'm going to hit Zoom. And sometimes this happens. It'll happen to your TI-84. I haven't seen it happen to my TI-83. I'll hit Zoom, and this, this menu pops up on the bottom here, and I can't hit Zoom 9. I don't know why it happens. It doesn't happen all the time, but it has happened sometimes. So my workaround here, um, you got to take a look at your, your you got to go back to your home screen, or I call it your home screen because I have an iPhone. We have that button down at the bottom, unless you have the fancy iPhone X and good for you. But I have that home, home screen button. Here's how you go home on your TI-84. You hit second in mode. If you hit second in mode, you can see the word quit's going to get called up. So let me quit out of this. All right. And for whatever reason, as long as I'm in this, this screen, if I hit zoom nine, I'm good to go now. Okay. Now I want to point out, you might be thinking like, why are there these gaps in here? And we want to talk about that. Okay. It's because when you hit zoom nine, your calculator is doing its best to understand or to try and create a graph based on your data. But it's, it's not perfect and you are more intelligent than your calculator. So we're going to, we're going to change what your calculator is guessing for its window. So let's go to window and start to talk about why the graph that you saw has those gaps in it. If you look here, it's saying, hey, make my smallest x value 2 and my largest 7.7, .7, which is fine. That's not a bad thing, right? 2 to 7.7. .7. The lowest number of hours I had a student working was 2 and the highest was 7. So that does capture my x-axis. But this is the problem here, this x scale. It's saying, hey, I'm going to make a rectangle every 0.7 units. And that's all fine and good, except for the way that we report this particular variable. It was number of hours worked in a day, and we report that discreetly. So I want to change this x scale to 1, because I either work 2 hours, or 3 hours, or 4 hours. I don't work 2.7, don't work 6.5. It's just reported discreetly with those ones units. Um, just for fun, I'm gonna change this. Let me scooch up. I'm gonna just give myself a little bit more room. So I think I'll go, what was our smallest number of hours worked? Two, so I'll change this to one. Our largest number of hours worked was seven, so I'll change this to eight. You don't have to, I'm just giving you options here. If you ever change your Zoom 9 window, don't hit Zoom 9 again, because it'll just go back to what we had. That's the time you hit graph. So now you see me hitting graph, and I've got a pretty good looking uh, histogram here, a cumulative histogram. I feel like I have a little bit more room on the left side than on the right side. 
So let me go ahead, just adjust my window. I'll change this and I'll turn it into a nine. And again, since I've changed my window, I'm just gonna hit graph. That's looking pretty good. All right, and again, I could trace this and find out there were no students between one and less than two hours, right? Because they worked at least two, right? two to three. And then here we go, here's the cumulative graph. So 11 students worked four or fewer hours that day. Okay. Or I could say 17 students worked five or fewer hours that day. A thing that I want you to notice is that this cumulative graph is always increasing as you move left to right because you would only accumulate data. As your x values get larger and larger and larger, you always accumulate data in a cumulative frequency histogram or a cumulative relative frequency histogram. All right, so there's a lot of words in there. I want to clear all of that out and do this one more way. Okay, and this way it wasn't shown over here, but it works just as well. It might take a little bit longer. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to scroll all the way back up to my original data so I can see that. I'm going to go back to my home screen for a sec. All right, so I cleared all of that out. I also want to teach you how you can clear lists out. So we want to start over. If I hit stat and enter, you can see I still have data in my list. So here's how you can clear data out of your lists. I'm going to clear all three. This is not the most efficient way to do it, but it's just our starter way. You ultimately will learn three different ways to clear data out of your list. So let me go up here. And as soon as you see L3 having the black background, it's a, it's a two button combo. It's clear, enter, right? Clear, enter. You see it's gone, right? But you have to be up in the, the name of the list. You can't be down here on the first cell. It's gotta be up in the list. So clear, enter, right? So I'll go ahead and I'll clear L1 out, clear, enter. There we go. All right. So here's a different way to do it. In our previous example, we entered all of our data values against their frequencies. You also have the option of just entering each number one at a time. This takes a little bit longer, so give me a moment. Here's data entry, five, enter, six, three, two, four, three. If you see a boo-boo, Actually, I guess you can't tell me. I'll hopefully find it. Six, five. Okay, so I have my data in there. Um, let's start talking about what this number in parentheses means. I'm going to scoot up, and what that's saying is the 20th entry was the number 3. And whenever I'm doing data entry, there's a good chance I'm going to make an error and just forget to put a data point or put one in twice by accident. So it's always a good idea to just take a look at the end of your list and say, okay, should the 21st data entry be my first blank data entry? or first blank cell, and yes, it should be. So at least I have the right number of data values. I might be off, like I might have clicked one number wrong here or there, but at least I have the right number of observations. So again, now that I got all of this in here, let me go ahead and clear this out, okay? So once I've done data entry, we're gonna go create our stat plot, second y equals, okay? Again, I've got plot one on. I need to edit it, okay? I do have the correct type. My variable is an L1. But my frequencies, this is the case where the frequencies should each be 1. I want each of the numbers represented, I'm sorry, each of the numbers in L1 represented exactly once on the graph. All right, so let me go, go down here. And again, I have this alpha on. If I try and hit the number 1, a Y is going to pop up. Okay, that's not what you want. So in order to do that, i got to hit the alpha key to turn it off. Now you don't see the letter A. You don't see an up arrow. You just see... A black square flashing at you. Now when I hit it, it'll be one. I'm going to hit enter. All right. I know it'll default back to that A, but I've got every data value in L1 will be represented exactly one time. So now let me hit my zoom nine. And it did it again. Huh, that's funky. So let me go back to my home screen and now hit zoom nine. There we go. And that matches that original histogram that I had over here back when we were doing L1 against L2 where the frequencies in, were in L2. So by doing it with this method, I'm saying take every data value in L1 and represent it one time. Over here, I was taking every data value in L1 and representing it L2 times. So I was taking the number two and asking for three of them. 
taking the number three and asking for five of them. But over here, if I look at my list, I just want this number represented once because I actually have all of those fives in there somewhere on this list. Okay, so just another option for you. All right, thanks guys, bye.